Radhe Radhe everyone. Welcome to our daily wisdom from Bhagavad Gita session. Nitin ji, over to you. Radhe Radhe, Mutavani ji, thank you Prana ji and Vijay ji for the wonderful session. Kendriya Samaya Nusare Bahu Samichinam. Samichinam. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Good morning, good evening everyone. Hope you all had a great weekend. Um, good to be back. Hope the feeling is mutual. We will get started. We will continue on the shloka that we are doing, BG um, 4.14, uh, Bhagavad Gita 1.4.14. Today we are going to discuss about an important topic. God is saying that my activities do not taint me, nor am I attached to the fruits of action. So today we will discuss what are the activities. Are there any activities cre- done without any prayojan or cause or a reason or a motive or a name, including God for that matter, right? So the entire end of spectrum that we look at from a foolish person all the way up to God, is it, do we, can we do anything without any motive to begin with is what we are going to discuss. And then how does it play into whether the action that we end up performing is tainted or not? That's what we'll build on as well. <clears throat> so we did a bit of a discussion on inner world, outer world. We're just tilling the ground on this concept. So we will go more deeper today. So let me share my screen and we'll get started with our opening prayers. Is my audio video good? Yes, Nathan J. All right, wonderful. So we will get started with our opening prayers. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu. Guru Devo Maheshwar Ha Guru Sakshat Para Brahma Tasmai Shri Guru Venama Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsu Chanur Vardhanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening, once again everyone. Let's get started. So, like I said, we'll continue on our discussion on 4.14. And uh, let's get started with the recitation of the shloka. Recite it and then you're welcome to follow. Namam karmani limpanti Name karma phale spreha Iti maam yo bhijanati Karma bhirna sabadhyate Shamji, please go ahead. Radha Shamji, good morning. Good morning, Radha Radha. Namam karmani limpanti Name karm palace praha Iti mamu yo bijanati Karma bins badjate Radhe Radhe. Wonderful. Thank you, Shamji. Radhe Radhe. Please do turn on your cameras. You'll be given first preference if you turn on your cameras. First preference for recitation. Yes. Go ahead, Rahulji. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Namam karmani limpanti. Name karma phale spreha. Iti maam yo bhijanati. Karma bhir. Karma bhir na sabhatya te. Wonderful. Very nice. Thank you. Rahul. Raji, go ahead, please. Okay, maybe we can move on. We can't. Nita ji. Nita ji. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Nam. Yes. Naman karmani nimpanti. Nami karma falis preha. Iti mam yo adhijanati. Karma bhirna sabadhyate. Radhe Thank you very much, Radhe Radhe. Samji, go ahead, please. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. 
ಕರ್ಮಿಂಪಂತಿ ನೀಜಾತಿ ಜಾತಿ ಕರ್ಮಿಂಪಿ 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 ಕರ್ಮಿರ್ನ ಸಭ್ಯತೆ ಶಿಶಿ <laughs> ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ರಾಧೆ ರಾಧೆ all right so let's get started first of all i wanted to wish everybody a very happy buddha purnima um lord buddha's ascension took place he's also one of the 24 avatars of lord vishnu is considered in fact i would say <coughs> lord buddha is one of the great um what do you call that uh, benefits for human kind uh, because people who don't want to believe in god he gave something for them as well to work with which which is something which is uh, pretty fascinating um because there are atheists they said you want to believe in god he said work with your consciousness so that is how uh, powerful buddha's message is, was as well however finally you have to surrender to god god has to be brought into equation okay but it's a good starting point uh, so if you see a lot of people get attracted towards buddhism uh, one of the usps of buddhism is it doesn't talk about god right because when buddha came the vedas were being uh, uh, misconstrued and misutilized in bali pratha and a lot of those kurityas had creeped into the society and that's where said okay let's let's start from scratch so to that end uh, buddhism um, you know, that avatar actually uh, is serving mankind even today a lot of people they that's their entry point to spiritualism right if somebody starts with spirituality they'll say buddhism okay. 
that's that's how they get started but as you get deeper you'll you'll understand that without bringing god into the mix it will not work so anyways let's get started with this shloka so today we are going to discuss about the concept of activities right what are the activities so like god is saying activities do not taint me nor do i desire the fruit of action one who knows me in this way is never bound by the karmic reactions of work so let's look at the entire spectrum on one end you have people who are foolish and on the other hand we have perfection in in form of god all the way across this spectrum everyone is there anyone who works without any a to motive aim priyojan objective whatever you may want to call it right i'm working just for the sake of it no there is always some motive behind every action that we do right so people who take selfies in front of train or near the bridge they also have a motive okay nobody does that without a motive so without motive none of us can work and that is what we will get started with god also says even he does activities for that matter so no one including a foolish person performs any action without an aim in mind there is always an aim okay now if aim is such an important thing every action is preceded by some kind of a motive priyojan hetu cause reason objective whatever you may want to call it then obviously there will be a lot of philosophers who have thought about it as well we will not be the first people to do that and yes a lot of philosophers have actually thought about this why do we do something when we do something okay what is it that drives us to do something and they broadly classified it into certain categories darshanics or philosophers what are those let's look at it so there are broadly um, five aims as they say the first one is immortality that drive people billionaires do that even today the quest is going on how do we make ourselves immortal how do we freeze our brain in a cryogenic cryogenics cryogenics yeah freeze it and then bring it to life again i told you an example of walt disney he 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 believed when he died that science will be able to revive humans so he put in his will put me in a freezer don't let my body decompose and because we are we want to have a sense of control and a sense of uh, proprietorship and a sense of greed right which is there that that is how he departed this world so he said all right you are going to freeze my body and the day you are going to bring me back into consciousness i don't want to start from ground zero so whatever my money is there it should still remain with me he did not write anything in his will and obviously you can imagine the world being world everybody being driven by self interest including his own sons that is the irony of our life right we leave a legacy with a lot of money and then the the kiddos and the generations they start fighting over it who get gets it even though they have not earned for it so same thing happened with the kids also they were not happy with their dad's will okay what kind of a will is it okay we don't even get a single dime and one day he was found that uh, somebody has taken over the plug of that refrigerator where his body was freezing so it had putrefied anyway so immortality is something that drives a lot of billionaires they invest in a lot of founding startups which actually promise that they are going to play god first of all they don't believe in god and they will be able to bring these bunch of chemicals to life so immortality is one of the aims which drives people okay and there is a reason for that we think we are mortal because we are eternal so if you look at it satchit anand right so sat aspect of it actually drives us towards eternity we think we will cease to exist when this body ceases ceases to exist and nobody wants to die that is one of the biggest fears in this world right the biggest fear in this world is the fear of death the fear of death and the second biggest fear is public speaking by the way all right anyways so that is the first one the second one is knowledge that is also an aim in life and whether you know it or not consciously or unconsciously voluntarily involuntarily 
uh, it happens it is happening all the times to us right through our gyan indriyas we are absorbing knowledge like a sponge throughout the day it is happening to us right? we spoke about the concept of informal knowledge happening to us it is always happening to us maybe some marketing some advertisement is feeding something friend is feeding something google is feeding something news channel is feeding something knowledge is there and we keep on absorbing it uh, it is the deliberate knowledge acquisition the mindful knowledge acquisition that truly really makes a difference in our life but it is also one of the aims in life we like to acquire knowledge we like to know about things right this drives people the third one philosopher said was independence we all love independence freedom people don't want to get married they want to enjoy their freedom and everything comes with responsibility also we had a big freedom fight right we all want to have freedom and do things the way we want so freedom is also one of the things that right this is also one of the key aims and objectives for human life then the second is desire to control this is an interesting one there is a desire to control people do that it gives them a sense of empowerment if they can control whether it, it's your kid whether it's your um, spouse it's your friend it's your country it's your party man it can go on and on there is always a sense of satisfaction people derive i have somebody i'll not name that person in our community his hobby is to fight elections okay we joke around and say his hobby is to fight elections and lose elections okay but he keeps on trying there is a sense of that i want to do something um where you make a difference or you are able to control things you are able to influence things that gives you a sense of satisfaction that is also one of the aims of life and i would put and then happiness interestingly somebody acknowledged happiness also as one of the aim of life and it is always the next exit which never comes okay now let's ask i mean a lot stop too much here what do you think is the key driver here in all of these that the philosophers have zeroed it down to five aims that human human life centers around if you were to pick the one that drives you anybody wants to share that end of the day um, which one would you resonate with the most and why anybody yes and samji i would say happiness because everybody want the happiness from small smart creature in the world and to the biggest one they want the happiness that is a motive basically all the immortality knowledge and all those things boil down to that part so they become to become happy in a nutshell radhe 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 no great anybody who wants to has an alternate view point that more than that i would pick up something else if that were to be the aim of my life these are the ones which philosophers have zeroed down on over a period of time okay so it's not something that i have come up with any anybody who 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 resonates with something else other than amji said go ahead padmaji <laughs> i'm not trying to narrow down but since your specific question is what would you consider yeah. the most objective type question with the options given to you mm, so i i like if i have to rearrange this and then i think about myself and everything in the mind like if i have to rearrange this i think i would rearrange if i have to teach this to to students i would rearrange this and just put the desire of control at the very top and say desire to control the immortality desire to control how much knowledge we acquire desire to control the independence desire to control the situations and to seek happiness so anything um that we think and we do is desire to control our mind or situation in hoping that there is happiness and hoping there is independence hoping that there is a knowledge acquiring hoping that there is an immortality hoping um for every f- other four things is i would just put the desire to control to acquire this other four i would just put this as a bigger category and to acquire okay. abcd understood desire to control your soul okay fair enough let's get to that i see devij his hand based as well yes baby. go ahead devi's iphone go ahead please radhe 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 ji devi ji 
not hear you. Maybe I can come back and try. Meanwhile, he tell, go ahead, Ji. Uh, Radhe, Radhe, everyone. Uh, yeah, so I, if I have to select one, I would definitely go with the knowledge. So as for me, uh, if I would consider knowledge is the one could help me to achieve everything. Mm -hmm. Knowledge can help me to achieve happiness. Knowledge could bring in and learn how to be immortal. Knowledge can pass along and learn how to be independent and how to gain independence. Okay. And from knowledge, I can control people and control my desire as well. So knowledge is the key point for me. Okay, fair enough. Get your point. Yes, Deviji, you wanted to say something as well? All right. Maybe not. Uh, Nitinji has written knowledge and happiness. I won't put wrong. I won't put wrong. I don't understand. Can you please? Uh, yeah. All right. Go so ahead, Deviji. You've been unmuted. Yeah, go ahead, please. Oh, it's okay. I'm not. Uh... Okay. Right, Swatiji, so... please go ahead. All right. One, it will take and then we'll move the discussion forward. Yes, Swatiji, please go ahead. Rade, Rade. I would prefer independence because I like freedom. Like whatever I want to do, according to me, it was like previously also before coming in the year, freedom was my first choice. Okay, freedom, great. So I saw. I mean, Samji started with happiness and said desire to control, and then knowledge, and then freedom. So let's go under the hood on this one. Under the hood, right? What looks, and then what is under the hood? So under the hood is desire for happiness. You want knowledge. That's a means to attain happiness. You want desire to control. It's, it's a stepping stone to the underlying thing is always happiness. Nobody's seeking misery. What if you get a desire to control and you control some people who give you trouble back, right? Obviously you can control them, but maintenance is very high for them. Would you like to still do that? No, you'll say it's fine. End of the day, everything that we do, even the freedom that we seek, right? Such a big movements happen, freedom movements happen. End of the day, we want to lead the life which is fulfilling and happy for us. Happiness is the key thing. That essentially boils down to the same concept. Everybody works for some kind of a happiness, some kind of a gratification, happiness, joy is what they are looking for. So all the way from the foolish person to God, they are working for happiness. That includes God as well. There is a prayojan, hetu, aim, objective, goal, reason for every activity that we do. And God says that my activity do not taint me. When everybody is working for happiness, why does God become an exception to that? Is what we will see today. Okay. So God has, um, has been excluded from that rule of uh, although working for happiness, he's saying I'm excluded for, from, uh, they do not taint me. And that's what we are going to discuss. So we saw that philosophers, although they have broadly categorized immortality, knowledge, independence, and all desire to control, but these are all um, means to an end. End is happiness. It's more like a lakshata vachata. Sometimes you say something, but you mean something else. So same thing, you do something, but end of the day, your objective is to seek happiness. Right? Somebody asked him, why are you studying? I'm studying so that I get good marks. Why do you want to get good marks? So that I get admission in a good college. Why do you want to get admission in a good college? So that uh, I get a good job. Why do you want to get a good job? So that I get a good match. Why do you want a good match? So that I can have a good family. Why do you want to have a good family? So that I can be happy, okay? End of the day, everything is boils down to happiness. And that's because we are part and parcel of the perfect ocean of happiness, which is God. God and happiness are synonymous. God and bliss are synonymous. God and joy are synonymous. So this quest for happiness will continue. This intense desire to feel happy will continue for as long as we are not cauterized. That will never, that thirst will never be quenched um, until we become cauterized. So happiness is something which drives us for every act of ours that we do. And even when we are trying to do something for others, behind the scenes, there's a subtle happiness self-seeking involved there as well. There was a fight that happened between husband and wife, 
big fight. So husband said, all right, I'm going out and I'm not eating food and I'm going to stay in the car tonight. And he went and stayed in the car. After a while, the temper of wife had cooled down. And then she felt apologetic, you know, while we picked up a fight could have been handled in a much better, better manner. So she took a water bottle and something for his husband. Her husband went to the car and offered him that. But his temper had not cooled down. He threw the bottle back. And the moment he threw the bottle back again, she was upset. You know, I tried to do that. So point me, our self-interest is still at play, even when we are trying to make up things or do that, because we want to feel happy. Even the act of crying, the moment we are born, all the way up to we depart from this world when we cry, it is an attempt at regaining that happiness. A crying is, if you don't cry, you will keep on piling it up inside you. Right? Nobody has given rule that if something bad happens to you, you will be sent to jail if you don't cry. Has somebody said that? No. Still we cry. Why? Because we want to feel light. We want to feel restore back to our original state. It is not normal for the soul to feel heavy and unhappy for long. So happiness is something that drives everybody. Okay, Right from foolish people all the way up to God. However, there's a difference. There's a difference and that's where we will see a little bit because although everybody is working with the prayogen, with the cause, with the reason, there's still a difference. Now let's look at this man. Okay, this gentleman. He performs an action. There's a motivation behind something and they perform an action like all of us do. Okay, now when this action is performed, you see this prism, what's happening? So this prism is like that desire for the fruits of action. Okay, this action is performed with this desire. So what comes out of it is, a karma that is tainted by trigod maya colors. You see the spectrum here? They form, they are formed because there was a desire for the fruit of action because of which that light, which could have been neutral, even passing through directly, has become colored now, tainted, which results in a binding karma. Okay, this is what the binding karma is. Whenever you put an action with a desire for the fruit of action, then it's just like this prism which splits the light into the different colors. And it will be an interplay of all the three colors that we talk about. What are these colors? These colors are that of Maya. These fall between the different proportions of uh, white, crimson and black, which is Sattva, Rajas or Tamas. Now, fruit, when you desire something based on the quality of your desire, it will fall into any of these categories. If the desire is to exploit somebody, if the desire is yourself go gain at the expense of somebody else, uh, if the desire is to hurt somebody, if the desire is to uh, just think about yourself, um, not about the larger good, it falls into the Amsic category. If the desire is to you know, create some kind of an action, something progressive, maybe a win-win kind of a deal, it could be Rajasik. And if the desire is purely to help out somebody and you know, if you gain something, that is a bonus, it is in Sattva category. So those are the three desires for any action that we perform day to day. Right? Even in our work, if you are desiring simply, all right, I should get promotion, I should get a bed salary so that I can have the next vacation, you are operating in a Rajasik mode. Enjoy enjoy just for yourself if you are thinking that i need to get up and i don't care about people around me and you know i will rise up the ladder at the expense of others and i you know those kind of mindset you operate in you are in a tamasic mode and if you are operating with the mindset of helping people uh you know really caring about them like servitude leadership that they talk about then it falls into sattva mode but if you are working you say god has given me the abilities to put in my best whatever i do I can earn more so that I can give more. End of the day, I have to justify my paycheck, whatever puts the roof on my head and the food on the table. And then I have to serve God to the best of my abilities. If you're having that mindset, then you are in Gunatit. So it really boils down to the objective that you, Prayojan that we spoke about, right? Through which we do that, that actually dictates whether the karma that we end up doing 
is tainted or not now going back there is a motive even for every work that we do right and philosopher said that there is a motive for everything now these activities if you look at it end of the day end objective is happiness only but the means that you employ to get to any of these would determine which color your karma would acquire okay now let's see how is it technically different for god <clears throat> we saw the definition of a binding karma how we get into a binding karma now aim behind all actions as we have established is the attainment of happiness whether it's freedom whether it's desire to control um, whether it's acquisition of knowledge end of the day if you don't get happiness out of that act we will we will shun that activity we just need happiness now there is a categorization of wicked people okay bhagavad gita talks about them as well who are wicked people they derive happiness and then there is a other category there is a wicked people then there are saints and then of course we have god himself right and then you have normal people as well so wicked people are the ones who are pleased when they see others in distress so they also derive pleasure they are also seeking happiness but their happiness is in seeing others in distress that can happen as well that is called wicked however saints and god if you look at them they perform actions for the welfare of others because it makes them happy they are also seeking bliss but their bliss is diametrically opposite they seek bliss in making others happy so why are they not working for their own bliss right why why do they derive bliss in giving bliss because their purpose is already served they have already achieved that divine bliss that people who are under maya are still seeking they are maya atit so they have already attached to the divine and that's why they have nothing left for themselves to do in subsequent shlokas god is going to talk about those categories as well when you have nothing to do what do you do at that point if you have already attained the bliss what do you do is it that you will get bored now and you need to do something no it is not an ordinary place where you will get bored you can actually perpetually enjoy that simultaneous perpetual bliss ever fresh ever increasing bliss or you can take up on some other assignment as well we will discuss it in later shloka but the point here is god and god realized saints every action of them is motivated for the welfare of others because it makes them happy that is their only objective no other objective do they have they have absolutely nothing else to gain at this point it's just like i give that example of a puri once you have become the puri that's it you cannot become the floor back and it's only until the puri is not made you see a lot of noise once the puri is made it the oil becomes quiet right so similarly saints and they are they are a done deal at that point if they are doing any activity that is only for the welfare of souls and same thing is for god also god is not every activity that god does is for the welfare of souls and it is said god is hard like a thunderbolt from the outside even as a justice dispensing father but soft like a butter from inside so every tear that you shed or every emotion that you feel actually with the correct god actually has to reciprocate it's spoken about that and he does that At the same time, that is how soft God's heart is, because karuna, compassion, mercy is what God is is actually um, craving to give us. You know, as soon as we have that eligibility, or we we'll strive for it. Now, if what does Ramayan say? Let's look at it. Ramayan says, "Samarth kahu nahi doshu gosai rabi pavak surasari kinai." basically what he is saying is god is all pure and whatever he does also becomes pure and auspicious okay that's another thing we have to understand <laughs> whatever god does becomes pure and auspicious let's look at it through an analogy so that we understand it a little better now if you look at the pure personalities um which is god himself and and his saints they are never tainted by defects even in contact with impure situations and entities and the analogy that is given beautifully provided by swami ji is sun let's look at the sun it doesn't get tainted if sunlight falls on a dirty puddle or sun retains its purity even while purifying the dirty puddle right 
so sun doesn't become dirty the effect is just the opposite similarly if you look at uh, fire if we put objects to fire impure objects to fire it remains it retains its purity the fire is pure whatever we pour gets into also gets purified right in india when during winter days people put so many things to fire in railway station tires and newspapers and everything does it make fire any less pure it doesn't on the contrary whatever is put into the fire becomes purified okay that is how god's activities are as well third example is there are so many rivulets and uh, tributaries and the, the nalas and all that they empty themselves into ganges does does it make ganges a gutter maybe at some places it has i don't know but the point here is ganges is pure and it transforms all those dirty gutters into the holy ganges right it has that special property if you take the ganges water it doesn't putrefy it's kind of an interesting phenomenon so when these things they empty themselves into something all pure <clears throat> those the things assume the property of the all pure the pure is not tainted okay so <clears throat> this is the very important concept to understand so even when god does narlila obviously he has to perform lila right he has to do activities like we all do then the activities that he done they are still pure and all perfect we should when we are not able to understand his leela we should actually talk to ourselves okay it's not making sense i need to put in more effort so that i can attract his weight and it makes sense to me rather than finding faults in his leelas so this is the key concept now let's have a bit of a discussion on i think there was another so similarly like the say god is not tainted by the activities that he performs he is not tainted at all okay so if he goes ahead and kill somebody he said oh god did that he did cheating no bali that was very cheating i don't like that okay you don't like that that's your problem god's leelas are perfect in themselves you don't have the bigger picture around anything you don't know how he settles the account okay in across different lifetimes so we cannot find faults it's as simple as that his actions are always pure and when we try to intellectualize god around that part <clears throat> couple of things happen one is obviously our faith will not develop second thing is that uh, uh it's our pride talking pride in the sense that uh, who how are we able to think something through our mind okay let's say the higher faculty than our mind our intellect and the knowledge that is there in our intellect that is through that we do the deduction and logical interpretation and and all the thinking phenomena that happens it's through our brain who energizes the brain soul which is our identity who energizes the soul the super soul so when something is the basis to illumine how can you understand that basis through something that has been illumined by that right it's it's not possible so if you have if it is just like somebody trying to lift themselves through their boot laces you stand on the ground can you lift yourself using your boot laces you cannot so similarly intellectualizing god through our brain it it doesn't take us too far the scriptures tell us his leelas his acts everything is perfect everything is perfect whatever he does it may not make sense to your ordinary intellect and your pride might tell us i and understand a lot my experience my knowledge my own thing tells me that but no it will lead you astray you cannot understand god because he is the basis of even the ability of thinking that you have so you cannot think the source itself which is providing you the source the ability to begin with so let's look at a have an interesting discussion around this <clears throat> um here's a guy as you can see who is driving a car okay and traffic lights come so obviously he's a law abiding citizen and he stops at the red light there comes a helicopter okay and this guy says why is the helicopter not st stopping 
what would you tell this person <coughs> okay let's have a bit of a discussion it is going ishan ji did you like the chopper first of all yes i like to own one if possible sure. <laughs> radhe radhe i guess the rule different for when you on the uh, road on on the air on the on or on the water so things differ as you i guess grow or as or the path you follow or the way you live your life is that so possibly let's hear from other participants as well anybody who wants to add anything to it yeah the rules are different for sure that is that is a good catch around it go ahead samji or rather rather basically the something similar like uh, it depends on the time space and situation different times same thing can be a beneficial so for the helicopter that is a the rules of the rules are not applicable because that is a different route and all those things same thing for the sea things also the ships cruise ships so it depends upon the time and situation and the location whatever the rules of the particular situation rather yep. than yep. sure. yep yep very true yes amrita wani ji your prerogative i don't want to call out ramya ji please go ahead i thought somebody muted you as well so ramya ji radhe radhe uh, i think the op- uh, the premises of operation is different this uh, the field of operation is road for the car and it is uh, the uh, the air for the helicopter the different set of rules will apply they will have the atc communication and also the premises is different yeah that's i think we are talking about that only let's hear i can see couple of other hands and real quick and then we'll continue on this kumar ji go ahead please uh, s- sorry uh, radhi radhi everyone yeah i i think the simple answer is the rules are different right so you know I, there's not much more to say sorry just for this question but i think it's connected to something else but the plain answer is obviously the rules are not applicable the rules of the road are not applicable to the helicopter because it flies on air while the cars are on the roads true obviously it's a very common logical sense right very very obvious thing that we can see why would this question come to begin with right great point kumar ji yes quite a few other rahul hands ji go ahead rahul ji rahul ji rahul the helicopter is driven by god yeah so that is maya dish and then we are driving the car so we are maya dish yeah so that is why rahul ji yeah great way of looking at it yes swati ji and padma ji real quick go ahead padma ji and then the the traffic light is for the for the car on the road and and if you look if we look at the red light and the yield and the green you know those are our way to either pause or go or yield that is good to safeguard and protect ourselves and not just us but everybody else and helicopter will have its own path and it will have its own um traffic lights or destination where it needs to go so it's just these signals it doesn't apply to helicopter these signals only apply to the passenger who is in the car to safeguard himself and actually everybody else also on the road wonderful very true so the guy is naive ignorant right basically who's who's having putting across this argument that why is he not stopping he's a naive guy i think he needs to be educated great point and then it's for the safety of the driver and for other drivers as well great point Padma ji, beautiful. I can see two more hands. Let's see. They have some other points to add, and then we'll continue. It's a very interesting discussion that is going to unfold from here on. Couple of comments in the chat. Preeti ji says, "I will tell him to elevate himself." Elevate. Kunal ji, great point. Yeah. If you want to disobey the rules or not have subject yourself to that, sure, beautiful point. You will have to elevate himself. Great point. Kunal ji says, "Don't compare your life and situations with anyone." Mm-hmm. That's true. Yes, Hetal ji and Swati ji. Swati ji, go ahead, please. 
So I would tell him to elevate yourself, right? Elevate within the, with the knowledge. Elevate so you can fly. You don't have any obstruction on the road or any, any light you can see. So just elevate yourself with everything. True. Round up, that's it. Yeah, great. Great point. I think you all were hitting the point. So the reason I brought in that example is if you're thinking this guy is naive and uh, pure stupid, just needs to be taught and uh, apply some common sense around it that is very true but we are all that driver okay when we try to analyze god's leaders the scriptures tell us <clears throat> when you sit on your armchair and intellectualize god leaders you cannot these leaders are perfect in themselves the different laws he is the lawmaker he is the lawmaker he design he puts the traffic lights and he is pretty much the law in himself Right. When you talk about the laws of science, material science, law of thermodynamics, law of optics, law of gravity, if there is a paint, painting, it implies a painter. Right? If there is a uh, poem, it, it implies a poet. If there is a beautiful piece of writing, it implies a writer. And if there is there are laws, there has to be a lawmaker. So he's the lawmaker himself. So when he does his leelas, they are perfect in them. So he's not whimsical who's coming and doing something hanky-panky and goes away. They are perfect in themselves. And he settles the account across different avatars and stuff like that because he has the broader, bigger picture in his mind. right? All, how he took care of Dhobi in Krishna avatar, how he took care of you know the fact that he killed Bali in the next life, all those things, he balances it out. But when we try to intellectualize it and trying, trying to find faults in it, then it's like just like being that driver where we don't have enough knowledge, enough understanding, enough depth, enough wisdom to understand that this is not a matter of intellectualizing. Those leelas have to be understood with devotion, not with our mundane, mundane intellect, which is worth two fingers worth of depth. That too is provided for by God and energized by God himself. So the first rule is never intellectualize God's leelas. Okay, we have to progress in the path of devotion because that doesn't take us very far. And, and there was an example that has been given by Sati, uh, Parvati Mata, to illustrate the point. She tested Lord Ram. Now she tested Lord Ram. Now she is herself goddess. Why would she have to test God? Would, can they fall under ignorance? Of course not. But they do these leelas to tell us human beings that don't put your mind in God's leelas. How did she test? She tested Lord Ram when Lord Ram was looking for Sita. He was crying and wailing like a person. Even in regular world, Romeo Juliet will not do that. The way Lord Ram was crying in the forest. You know, every Lata, every tree, everything he was asking, Ki, where is Sita? Have you seen Sita? That is how badly he was crying. Looking everywhere and asking the forest and everything. And on seeing Lord Ram like that, she asked Shiv, you know, you think he's really the Par Brahma that we talk about? He's all-knowing, he's omnipresent, and he's, he's crying like a baby. Even a worldly man will not cry like that. So Shiv said, okay, don't have doubts. Nevertheless, she still persisted with her doubt and put on Sita's um, form. Right? You've seen Chandrakanta, you can change your form. So she also changed her form. She has that power. Okay, they have all those powers. So she became Sita and sat in front 
where Ram was crying and wailing and looking for Sita just to test him out. And Ram, the moment he saw her, now Ram considers Lord Shiva as his spiritual father. Okay? And Lord Shiva considers Ram as his spiritual father. That is the mutual admiration club that they have when they do Leela. Okay? It has to be understood in proper perspective. Some people think because he worshipped Ram, uh, worship Lord Shiva and Rameshwaram, so Lord Shiva is their highest teacher. So that it's not has to be understood like that. They both consider each each other as their aradhya or their spiritual fathers. So the moment he saw Parvati in the form of Sita, because Shiv is his spiritual father, so technically Parvati becomes his mother, and he says, "Mother, what are you doing here?" Okay, looking at Sita, he said, "Mother, what are you looking doing here?" And Parvati was like zapped. So immediately returned back to Shiv. And Shiv said, where did you go? Obviously, she couldn't tell her, tell him because he had warned her already. But because Shiv is now, he's also all-knowing and they're doing Leela. So he said, because you took on the form of my spiritual mother, right? Sita is his spiritual mother. Okay, Parvati became, Parvati is Ram's spiritual mother. Sita is Shiva's spiritual mother. He said, because you took on the form of my mother, I cannot accept you as my wife now. Okay, and because of it, she had to become a sati and all that story, then came as a Himalaya's daughter and all. So the point here being that these leelas are done by God to tell us, don't put your brain, don't apply the same rules around that. And God is saying his activities are untainted. We cannot consider that what God did was wrong. Right? God did this thing which did not make sense. So that is why it was wrong. It his activity has to be tainted. His leelas and everything is perfect always. And that is essentially what God is saying, that his activities, although they are motivated by uh, seeking happiness, that his happiness is in basically seeing people progress and be happy, still they are not tainted because he's above these laws. So the key thing here is uh, God's activities are untainted. Our activities are tainted. And that is because we operate out of a desire for self-interest or the fruits of action that we want to enjoy, that makes it a binding karma. Any questions on that? Going back to the shloka, if you look at it, we operate with aims, certain aims in mind. And that aim, if when done with, an, with a motive of enjoying for self, becomes tainted. But when it becomes a motive for others, then it is untainted. And only God and uh, God-realized saints are capable of operating at that level because they are a dandi, we cannot. For as long as we are not God-realized, we cannot. So somebody said we have to elevate ourselves, that's right. We have to reach to the level of the helicopter before those rules are no longer applicable to us. Even saints' activities are untainted. <laughs> when they come here, for our ordinary mind, they may seem like ulta activities, contradictory, but they are untainted because they are operating. Basically, they are surrendered and God is operating through them. They are mere instruments at that point. Yes, let's take some questions and then we'll move forward. Now, when the tainted actions happens, what happens is what we're going to discuss tomorrow. So, we can take some questions and any announcements that we might have uh, from the one. Yes. Uh, Ramya ji, please go ahead. After this, I will do the announcements. Uh, Radhe, Radhe. Feedback. Uh, yes, Shri Ramya, please go ahead. Yeah, so my question is we have listed five aims, right? So now uh, to work, um, God doesn't have any of the five. So that puts a sixth category, which uh, says uh, like elevation of others as the uh, aim or the purpose. So end of the day, again, that is geared towards happiness only, right? Whatever you do, it could be a means, but end is happiness, even for that. So, so God is also working for happiness, but he gets happiness when others elevate themselves. True. So there are two kinds of happiness God has, right? He gets happiness when he sees that people are uh, following the injunctions and actually uplifting themselves and gaining the entitlement to get all that he has to give them. That is one way. Second bliss that he gets is by being seated within the devotees themselves. When devotees relish the bliss of God, right? God is seated within, within the devotees also. That bliss that devotee gets, when God relishes that, he feels even more sweeter. 
what the bliss God can enjoy. That is why he's called supreme enjoyer. So he gets happiness by giving us happiness. And by giving us happiness, when we that is a pure happiness, not our regular happiness, he relishes it even more. That selfless love kind of a happiness that you get, he with it seated within you, he's able to relish it even more. Anyway, it's a deeper concept we'll discuss in one of the days. So end of the day, God is enjoying everything. But he works for the happiness or the his prayogen is to give us happiness and uplift us. That gives him happiness. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Radha. So yes, you said if you put want to put the sixth category of helping others, that's fine. But then why are you helping others? If you go to the why, again, for happiness. So happiness actually encompasses everything. <coughs> everything is done for the sake of happiness. Nobody does anything for the sake of misery without having been taught. Nobody taught us to be happy, right? In the school, did teacher tell us, be happy? No, WhatsApp forwards tell us, be happy, but teacher never told us and we intuitively know it. That's because that is who we are. Yes, Sam. Sam. Uh, Radhe, Radhe. Uh, uh, my question is simply that some of the slides are jumping to the, the tight heading of that 415, 416. Are they related to this thing or this happened to be by oversight? Some of the slides, but the heading was 416, 415. Did I move to 415 already? No, no. But the title, see the top line? Oh, that's fine. Okay. okay. That's a typo. You can, you can ignore that. Okay. On a lighter note, on the fire thing, if, I mean, this is a lighter note again. If somebody happened to be cooking on the funeral pile, nobody does it with his right mind. Will that food will become good or no good? Or is it a desirable thing? I mean, nobody will be doing it. I know the lighter side I'm talking about. Just curious. I don't know. Fire will do its own job. Only fire is pure, regardless. <clears throat> Sindhutai Sapkal, have you heard our story? Yeah. Sindhutai Sapkal, <clears throat> she actually... Um, she cooked one time, I guess. Conceived the baby by cutting her own umbilical cord because she was discarded you know, by her husband. <laughs> her own family rejected her. So in order to sustain herself, she would actually cook on those funeral pyres. There, there used to be times that that's what I heard in her story as well. I heard that too. Yeah. Now, if it would dilute her consciousness, why would she end up becoming a mother of you know 70, 80 orphans? And her naughtiest orphan ended up becoming her own husband when he became yes. old. So I think it intent comes down. If you're doing it, like Aghori Babas, if you're doing something. Yeah. Because your motive intent is something different than possibly, but fire is pure in itself, if you look at it, right? That is why uh, in uh, Sanatan Dharam, the body is offered to the fire. Because through the fire, all the five elements are returned back. Akash Tattva goes to the Akash, water, soil, everything. And Agni claims the Agni aspect of your body. And that is why it is considered, you know, that ritual <clears throat> in Sanatan Dharam, everything is returned through the fire. Fire is considered one of the Pratyaksh Devatas also, right? Somebody was asking this question, Devatas, obviously that God's energy is there. Every molecule, about subatomic particle has God's energy in it and there's a motion there, right? And secondly, there are Devatas who are in charge of these energies, like Vayu Dev is there, Agni Dev is there. And Agni is one of the Pratyaksh because it has form. And that is why a lot of rituals are carried in front of Agni, Agni ko Sakshi Manke, like they say, right? Even the seven feras are done around Agni. So many things, right? They say, take an oath, oath, putting your hand on fire, will hold your feet to fire and all that stuff happens. So I, fire in itself remains pure. But I think it boils down to our consciousness. If we are doing things for from a tamsic mindset, then obviously we'll get that result. But as such, uh, at least that's how I see that. All right, any other questions? Yeah, uh, God already has happiness. So what does it mean when we say he is getting happiness? Like bliss himself, feeling bliss by elevating souls? Yeah, we can't fault with God that God is greedy. He needs more happiness. Now, his happiness is not like our happiness. Our happiness uh, is finite in extent. It becomes stale after a while and then it is um, ever decreasing. We get happiness in meeting somebody and we get happiness in hugging somebody. But then if you keep on hugging somebody after a while, you'll say, okay, stay aside. 
so our happiness will always diminish the god's happiness is called ever fresh it is not an ordinary happiness which you know finishes off it is ever fresh because you know and, and it, that is the attribute of true happiness basically ever fresh ever increasing and infinite in extent so to that end it's not that god needs something more to feel better he already has what he needs it's just about a bad matter of sharing what he has with others but he cannot share it in free fund like we do right fathers leave billions of dollars for their kids in free fund and then they are spoiled and they keep fighting for the rest of their life god said no i will not do it that way i will raise you like a proper kid and the day you are ready i'll give you the entire wealth that i have to give you in fact i'm even willing to become your slave at that point but god's happiness is not the ordinary happiness that that he needs something more to plus or or it will become minus from him it's 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 out of compassion rather than any self seeking uh, for god and saints <clears throat> they don't need anything more actually even saints for that matter they're not obliged to come down why would they come down they can just enjoy their bliss right i look at even uh, swami ji for that matter the amount of bliss you get in sadhana and meditation it is indescri indescribable at least in theoretically that's why people don't get off it once you start getting that bliss you don't want to get out of it hours and hours can pass by but then a devotee gives up that bliss also and say that i'm going to serve god and what you get in return is only they would know right god will not say okay you keep on doing the hard work you will not get anything in return obviously they are getting much higher than that bliss that you one would have gotten just if they had thought about themselves and that is why in, in bhakti they say you reject bhukti and mukti as well because mukti is what mukti is dukh nivritti you have finished your miseries you are a dandi that is not an ordinary bliss it's a spiritual bliss but in bhakti mark they say you give up that as well because that is also selfish you say no i give up i reject that and i want to serve you god that is even higher bliss and divine love eligibility starts become when you have rejected both because bhukti and mukti are the maid servants of bhakti that is what our scriptures say to bhakti devi maid servants are bhukti and mukti bhukti we all know bhukti we are that is what we are going after right material opulences material pleasures bhukti we don't need any introduction bhukti goes all the way up to brahma lok mukti is a spiritual bliss we when we reject that that's when we get into the realms of bhakti all right i know we are at 10 so up over to yamita wari for any announcements you wanted to make yes sanapanji thank you the announcements are the family camp the yoga festival that's coming up um uh, and swami ji is in us his us tour all the uh, all the links have been posted in the chat window the feedback tracker has also been posted so please take a moment to see that and for the family camp swami ji's lecture daily lectures by swami ji in the family camp are daily lectures on bhagavad gita and i believe in the evening it's gopi geet yep. daily lectures on gopi geet yes and do please uh, connect uh, on facebook or twitter or instagram with the uh, rkt so that's a seva for hari and guru so yes nitya ji those are the attendants oh, sorry announcements all right great yeah please do sign up for the retreats um, bhagavad gita is going to be there so i'll be making a lot of notes and encourage you to make notes as well and uh, gopi geet is getting into the depths of bhakti what is selfless love uh, they go into very deep deep details so i'm looking forward to those sessions as well and then international yoga festival is coming up do avail an opportunity to attend our satsangs <clears throat> all these activities are available in plenty and then i hope you have already signed up for the seva which tejal ji is leading so take an opportunity to do a little seva that you can do that will be very helpful as well yes i used to keep uh, i mean uh, prakash and myself we keep talking like you know generally we have 24 hours oh we still have so much time left so much time but once you are into this 24 hours is really not enough that's what we keep talking <laughs> maybe one of these days we'll get a siddhi to control the rotation of earth and sun right and generate more hours for ourselves possibly that can happen as well right krishna actually stopped time so 
but yeah but 24 hours you'll be able to squeeze more time that that that's what you will realize you can ask your husband okay there is a finding time from this i told him you start doing seva you will find time for it yeah like your, every minute of the day starts count getting counted at that point when you start doing seva otherwise time will find its own ways Right. I've not seen him talk so much with you know people like that's what I said. Sixteen years of marriage, I've not seen him talk so much. Good, at least Seva has made him talkative, right? If that's what you are implying. So. so he keeps, yeah. <laughs> so Nitinji, just a quick question. So family camps, how how many times? I I was there last year. I, well, how is it like? You know, I just want people to know more, participants to know more. If we can just talk two minutes sure. about it. So family camp is. Uh, uh, a crash what do you what should i say a condensed spiritual experience where you block out everything now if you choose to watch television and on mobile and stuff that's your choice but it is strongly recommend to block out that and you will have an opportunity to immerse yourself the routine is like you come for you start your day with yoga and meditation okay mm-hmm. breakfast everything is there inside the hall itself good food is there bhajans are going on throughout discourses are there activity spiritual activities going nature walk is there everything is about an out and out spiritual experience where you have blocked out the entire world now what happens is normally in our day to day lives we are not able to do that despite our best intentions there are things that will demand your attention but when you do that for 3 days because you are there so the the bliss of god something when you start feeling you know typically they say it happens around second day end of day or third day when you experience that you would realize you have never experienced something like this ever before in your life okay and that will every time people come they say this has been the best retreat so the and then people there are people who are crying they don't want to go back i mean obviously it, that all good things come to an end the the real art is to create that retreat even when we walk out of that life but those days are really really blissful obviously it will take a lot of effort to get to that stage where we can replicate that experience even in our real life like swami ji probably does right he is in his own he is operating with you at the same time it will take a lot of spiritual practice but that experience is very unique so definitely experience that and just immerse yourself just immerse yourself in the kirtans that are going on and pretty um, state of the art um, what do you call that instruments that they have and our bhajan team is so i've seen that evolution in the last 5 6 years you simply sit and close your eyes and you will be taken to another world that is how beautiful professionally uh, executed those bhajans are and it's a very blissful experience so knowledge bhajans and blocking out that time and immersing yourself in that experience uh, will will make you feel something that you will say ah oh, that was something different so do do ex- experience it and uh, it may start off as an experiment but then you will say i need more of it so we really look forward to these uh, those three days are like festival and a very very blissful experience um us please don't miss out in india also if you get a chance please do that i'll see if we can all meet in puri um, hopefully a lot of you can make it as well i'm also planning but regardless i would say uh, look at opportunities wherever swami ji has a lot of retreats in banara and Uh, puri now is going to start and then us we have so many opportunities to so check it out hopefully i made a good pitch for it thank you so much nitin ji yeah padma ji and sham ji yeah like you do servicing of your car this is servicing of your mind okay it is, <laughs> it is a must have you have to do it once in a year or i would say as frequently as you possibly can mm-hmm. okay go ahead padma ji Just a quick question. Um, for the yoga festival, it says it's in person. So hybrid. Was... Hybrid. It will be virtual as well as in person. As well as. So when we say pers- in person, we're just saying that we can be physically present in the temple, but the speakers will be Possibly. zooming in. Possibly. Possibly, or speakers might be in person, and we might be virtual. or both will be in person or both will be in virtual i think all possibilities are there amrita vani ji should know it better she is smiling so that means you will... <laughs> that those are working days for me so i 
yeah okay. even for us it's working day so i think those sessions are typically in the morning evenings and stuff like that so as best as we can follow you know i did the same last time around but the things that we can attend during the evenings or over the weekend i would strongly encourage to attend those in person but we have yeah. a massive cast of speakers uh, yes i think yeah so it's going to be a very interesting event it's like morning and evening padmaji like morning few hours uh, they'll have it in person and hybrid like you know they i i remember they did 108 surya namaskaras last uh, year yoga fest so there were people in person not sorry last year it was only online so they are like that so and there is even a health fair on saturday so that's definitely a in person right that program. i figured it in person but i wasn't able to figure out if the speakers were also in person like participants can, can as we get closer to the date i think the detailed schedule will be published so that will bring in more clarity yeah sham ji go ahead please thank you padma ji radhe 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 sham ji as i said the main aim of of this life is to bless so so rightly said that the family camp is all bless happiness isn't that and by the way i just did online for it last month itself so i do not know online how will it help me but because you know how online things have it take things easy Take things granted because when you are there first in person, you make sure you are there virtually, mentally, physically, emotionally. But online things are a bit different because the timings won't match. Understand, understand. Have the priorities lined up. I I don't know. No, just the thought came, so I just thought I'd share my thing. But I know I the, the in the in person experience is definitely hundred times more for sure. However, we can still get the nuggets of knowledge <clears throat> online, and you know if we. if you can block out stuff and immerse in the teethans and stuff like that but obviously the in person experience cannot be replicated right that is a different experience for sure i would agree oh, one day some day i wish i will be there yeah you, i don't know i can see you working in dallas in a few years time for sure <laughs> sham ji but swami ji's lectures um, is like where people from all over they can like you know and people from india or us you know it's a time where you can at least Swami Ji's lectures that is like will be yeah that will be a good one maybe a few yeah, things yeah we'll definitely miss but yeah yeah I'm trying to be there uh, whatever time I can be I just plan my day accordingly as per the plan goes let's see how it goes but still yes yes it's rightly said the aim is the bliss whether we whatever we do in life whether whatever ultimate goal goal is uh, bliss bliss this is different routes we take but the destiny destiny is one the and path by and bliss is god the yeah. definition of bliss is god yeah so we don't have a choice but to do god realization whatever pace we pick up whether you want to crawl whether you want to walk whether you want to run whether you want to fly is our choice there is no other plan b that's it it's as simple as that because we will that, keep doing yeah. bliss the one spin is group that we, i guess we all know that the ultimate goal we have is to be be there i'm sure so all our aim is yes Yes, yes, yes. Radhe, Radhe. It's an imposed aim on us. Very true. Um, because of who we are. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you, Samji and Kumarji. Go ahead, Samji. Radhe, Radhe. Eating ji. Radhe, Radhe. Samji. So they say, um, like Guru is the one who pulls out, right? From who elevates us, isn't yeah. it? But then, uh, I mean, if, uh, there is, uh, there are things to do on our part. Also, we have to follow him, his instructions. Mm -hmm. True. then if we follow him that is because we are following his instructions we are getting elevated right true that is the whole objective about it because guru knows exactly where you are getting stuck and he'll, he'll take off the next impediment that is how the instruction is tailored for sure so and what do you mean what do you mean but they'll take off uh, the impediments because uh, see impediment guru means samji is stuck somewhere samji yeah. secret stash is getting mm -hmm. troubled by people around right then he will give you an assignment if you follow mm -hmm. that that will help you conquer that mindset that is how guru gurus work right he cannot do magic on you put your hand and say ashirwad beta and you are done deal not doesn't work that way okay he will give you something and then when you work on that it will help you conquer that frailties or or the or the impediments that we have on the path of our spirituality that is why uh, that means the situations we are getting are given by guru uh, if you have a guru uh, 
possibly it could be part of his direct seva but if you don't have a guru then obviously god is your guru is giving you that right and until you find a proper guru obviously the way to god is through guru but what happens to people who don't get a guru who are not ready for a guru yet right even god gives you the test and the lessons at that point it's not happening all by themselves right they are also dictated they're happening when guru happens you get much more force and strength at that point right if you especially if you're following their injunction but everything that is happening in our life is a custom made hand picked course designed for us based on what we need to learn by god kumar ji go ahead please so they say that anything that bothers you is the lesson for you simple anything that bothers you is the lesson for you next time you get start getting bothered that means you have to understand the lesson behind it radhe 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 nitin ji uh, welcome back kamtavani ji uh, <clears throat> so yes i think uh, nitin i totally agree with that nitin ji that uh, the lesson is given and then the lesson is repeated till we learn the yes lesson unfortunately i i had a hard time with that you know i'm like why is this coming back again because i had not learned the lesson so uh, it's even in, it's, material, uh, even in material world when we fail kumar ji we are made to repeat that class right correct same thing in spiritual world if you are get upset with an angry neighbor no matter where you go you will find an angry neighbor until you crack that and then the neighbor will become the most pleasant one that you would ever see yes please finish up your thought exactly and and you know like um, when we go through this right basically um when we are in this body consciousness we are you know we get angry we get greedy and all that stuff and then of course with uh, slow um baby step purification process you know we get better and things around us become better as well you know not exactly as we want to probably but uh, at least we can see that it gets better um that's one thing and of course uh, what i wanted to see was i saw the link for the yoga festival and i uh, saw uh, swami sarvapriyananda ji yep now he i'm telling you if you have not listened to him again i mean there are a few yeah. few people i hear it it puts me in bliss just hearing to them one is our swami ji of course second is swami sarvapriyananda ji when i hear him my goodness i i feel a brother like uh kinship with him i i don't know why i i simply don't know why but listen to him and please see yourself then there is a person whom i consider my sister sister shivani ji these people i am telling you just put me in the state where i want to be all the time and their advice is so good um if we can follow it right nothing like it of course i take uh you know things which i can do from each person and try to incorporate that uh but i am really looking forward to his, his this and discussion as well and also on our family camp you know like i thought about it a lot and i am slowly i have requested for time off so i'm waiting on that and trying to see if i can do it in person okay i'm you know so that i can see you all in what person what about you to be it will be wonderful to meet you in person if that happens and you are so right see when we start um tuning into <clears throat> the spiritual messages and we start understanding because of god's grace of course then because this message is so pure it's food for our soul it actually has some kind of a connect with our heart you know you know something is happening something is clicking because it's pure it's touching your soul but it happens with god's grace of course and then it's a great realization when you hear such speakers and the message you know uh, that is coming from our scriptures and uh, some of the stuff which is a direct food for our soul you will feel that connect you know that uh, something like this needs to now i'm getting it otherwise when you are so much busy in your day to day stuff with your regular life these things you would have never you would miss out on that experience for sure great great realizations maybe we can quick we can take and i know we are over time amutavani ji yeah so okay if it's question or anything maybe if you all can be real quick minuteesh padma ji yes padma ji sam so sam just question um 
um, and I'll try to say this um, the best way, even though God gives you the struggles and confusions, but he also gives us um, this beautiful thing, which is called willpower. So that is in Hindi, I think it's called um, uh, if, I, if I'm using the right word, the Bitar Ki Shamata is your inner um, true potential of what you can reach up to is your free will that you have to execute. That nobody is just going to come um, magically and just execute um, that willpower for you or put you in that drive or drive your car. You have to put that, uh, you have to put yourself in the driver's seat and you have to execute that willpower through using the tools and the resources which are provided to you through guru, whoever guru that you want to follow, whichever means that you want to follow, whatever the nugget that you want to follow, use that so that you can work upon yourself from inside so that the circumstances or the situations that God has given, you would see the power of those situations and the confusions come your way only because you, God wants you to grow. So you have to take that first step to say, how does it look for me to execute my willpower? How does it mean? What does it mean to execute that willpower? Because you know from knowledge wise that we have to execute that willpower. So you have to test your grounds and, and your feet, you know, keep, get your feet wet and, and test yourself. What does it mean to actually execute my willpower? Can I control my thoughts? So when you start experimenting with your own willpower, you would see, oh, this is what exactly it means to execute my willpower. Great point, Padmaji. I think you can give some personal inputs to Samji as well. Great points. Yes, Shamji, real quick. I know we are late. Yeah, just two minutes, Radhe, Radhe. I just wanted to say that as we have all Guru to pull us out from our whatever we are in, I would say that in, uh, in my case, it was God who put me in and he's the one who's pulling me out. Oh. That's my experience. And as uh, Kumarji said, that family camp is a way to meet all of us. I would suggest that we can have once in the three month one camp online where we all turn the cameras on. We can see and we can interact. <laughs> That's my, my thought. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. I know Sam Shyamji has been making that request. So maybe next picture day when it's going to happen, we can plan for that our next picture day. Um, he said maybe At one least one, when we interact with Ritin Bhai or any of the questions we have, like Padmaji's camera is always on when she interacts, we has some nuggets for us. So likewise, we all, when we interact, at least we can have cameras on and we can, that, 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 that's a thought. Radhe, Radhe. <laughs> Yeah, Radhe, Radhe. Camera's off now. We can't see, we can't interact with you. <laughs> Don't feel it. Like, connect with you. With my, what I mean to say, I absolutely get it. You so, feel so connected when you call, talk somebody. That way, that's yeah, it. So Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Yeah, it definitely helps uh, for sure. So let's do our next picture day, and that will make people come, feel more comfortable coming on cameras and interacting. That always helps. All right, so let's do our closing prayers for the day. Uh, wants to take a lead on that, and tomorrow we will continue on this discussion and and look forward to another engaging session tomorrow. Go ahead, Shamji. You can then. Yeah, Radhe Radhe. Radhe. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Makaschit Duk Bhag Bhavet. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you, Shamji. Uh, thank you, everybody. And good to see you back, Sandhya. Now you're back from Vishnu Devi. So hope your fatigue and everything is taken care of. <clears throat> and you're back to your co-hosting as well. Have a wonderful day. Uh, I'll rest of your day. And uh, good night. Good day to everybody. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow then. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you, Nitinji. Thank you, everyone. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you.